Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to make a video this week or if I was going to make a video today, it's Thursday. Um, I am in kind of a weird place. It's gotten a lot warmer the last week in the UK and if you remember me this time last year, I was beginning to unravel a bit um, and I'm starting to feel it again and it just sucks because it's a pattern I can see really clearly in my life <laughs> like throughout the years is like it gets warmer and I struggle with it, the attic gets warm we don't really have aircon in the same way in the UK as you can get it in America and other warmer countries um, I've been doing some research this last week but it's exceptionally expensive a lot of the time they only just about work, they're loud as hell the cost <laughs> i can't get over the cost um it's hard to fit them to uk windows if you don't have sash windows a lot of our windows open like outwards on a hinge rather than lifting up or down so you can't slot something into a window you have to do it with like a hose and then because of the again it's not a sash window you have to fit the hose into like a funny side piece that goes in the hinge and it's like a whole thing um i've been doing a lot of reading and nothing seems like a good option um, I will keep looking. If you are in the UK and you have some kind of aircon that is not built into your house, um, let me know how you did it. I'd, I'm just, I can't, I just can't work out what the best option is. Um, having to face down the spring, <laughs> first of all, but also the knowing the summer is coming, basically the approaching summer, sitting here and feeling it get stuffy in my attic and thinking about how I have a whole summer to go <laughs> um, with my sleep stuff going on. I, I I do feel myself beginning to unravel a bit and it sucks because you can see the pattern and you know why it happens and you can you know what tends to help but you can't stop it from happening if you know what I mean it's just one of those ones I'm uncomfortable I hate it um as such and also because my sleep clinic appointment is now only like two months away generally speaking I'm just kind of bricking it <laughs> I feel weird in myself um, I'm feeling kind of nervous and trapped and a bit and just too hot basically. I'm feeling too warm. I've kind of got the spins <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm developing a migraine maybe and that's why I feel so weird because migraine tomfoolery will do that to you But basically I just I feel you know, not great That's the preface. <laughs> that's the vibe we're coming into this with. Um, I was sitting here at my desk looking at my books um, thinking about things and I was thinking about a lot of things and then I realized that I might as well think to you guys out loud I might as well talk it through um, it is something I find quite useful <laughs> that's partly why I made the channel again um, it's nice to be able to, to chat about it and to think about it out loud and then to get feedback from you guys afterwards is always really helpful too in the comments and then sometimes my thought process helps others and then they help me back with their thought process and it's just a good loop so in the interest of not sitting at my desk and spiralling alone, <laughs> um, I figured we could talk about it. My Filofax, the Filofax update, not too much going on this week. I've been working on some stuff on my iPad, thinking about some things It's kind of related to what I'll talk about. Um, I feel like my desk is smaller today than normal. I feel like everything needs to shift back a slight, a slight bit. Um, there's not a lot going on at the moment. I'm in the Japanese cover that I bought that I linked last week just because everything's getting warm <laughs> um, and like my hands are like ever so slightly sweaty, which is icky, but you know, things are getting warm. And so touching the suede when my hands are not dry or not bone dry, I guess. Normally my hands are really cold, but they're starting to get kind of, kind of icky. The texture is freaking me out at the moment. So this week I'm in the Japanese cover. It's beautiful holds a lot more than I kind of expected, which is nice. Um, I made a page for Dead Boy Detectives. These are the two covers. Some thinking, <laughs> so many thinking. Um, this is an edit for an Echo and the Bunnyman cover or photo of them. Um, it's a funny edit someone's done where they've made it spookier than it is. I just like it a lot. Um, in the back, I have all my commonplace pages right now because I was moving my binders around and I didn't want to purchase extra binders just yet, the plastic ones, the PVC ones, so I've just put all my commonplace pages in the back here. Um, but that's nice because it showed me that actually this cover holds a lot more than I maybe thought it would, because once I take that chunk of paper back out, I'll have however much room to put more pages in, so it's really nice. Um, the silver and the like, light grey and the black are actually growing on me. I like it a lot still. Um, so that's kind of that. 
in my on my ipad <laughs> in my digital file of my digital file of facts papers that i print i've been working on an idea for adapting the weekly spread that i sell in the shop like as a sleep blog for myself because my sleep clinic appointment is getting closer and i'm very worried about it i've been trying to channel that into something helpful for myself um so i've been typing out sort of like my little sleep reports every day um and then thinking that i could print it I guess at the end of the month or before my appointment or every week whatever and then I could collect them in here um which would work fine <laughs> the thing I've been thinking about this week though which is a bit of a curveball and I'm not abandoning my file of facts so don't worry it's okay I know I said that all last year <laughs> but this year is more solid um I guess just because it's warm and because I'm worried and because I do feel a bit a bit weird I've been kind of missing my Hobonichi cousin um I I don't know. I know that last year it didn't really work long term. I kind of dipped in and out of it. I have it over here. But I was looking at it the other day and I was like, I kind of miss it. I kind of miss having a big book that you dip in and out of. Like, it's something about how big and flat it is. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's There's something so satisfying about the shape and the size of it specifically. And I know that eventually I got to the point last year where the A6 books definitely made more sense for me on a personal level or on a maintenance level than... What is going on on my desk today? I feel like nothing fits like it normally does. <laughs> um, I know that the A6 books made more sense for me in the end. That was the conclusion I came to. But there's just something so satisfying about like the big flat, the big flat book. Um, and I was like flipping through it because I have pages from as early as April. And then I kind of dipped in and out of it for a lot of the year. Also, when you you know when you use a lot of Hobonichi paper and it starts to get crinkly and fluffy? I miss that. <laughs> I kind of miss that. I hope the new Tomo River paper does it in the same way. Someone tell me. Is it fluffy? Like, I love how, how crinkly and used it feels. It's such, like, a nice sensory experience. And then I had some photos going through the summer a bit when I was in my file of facts. I kind of came back and stuck bits in and that's nice. And then I started using it properly again, I think, in September. Yeah. September. And, like, I don't know. It was just a nice space, you know? Um, and then going through into October, I used it. And my Halloween spreads in here, like, all my spooky bits are actually, like, they hit on a whole different level now. Like, this... I'm like, this is probably one of the best spreads I ever made <laughs> in my life. Um, it really hits in a in a way that is like, it's like a serotonin boost. <laughs> um, these ones are also nice. I remember, oh, the pumpkin patch. Um, and then there's a couple towards the end as well. There's one that just has like, I mean, this is nice. And then there's one with a ghost somewhere. Yeah, and I was just like, wow. And also, like, oh, my Constantine. <laughs> my Constantine 2005. This one, um, I just, I don't know, kind of miss it. I think the problem when you're a planner person or a notebook person, and this is what I've been thinking about a lot this week, is that I know, logically, I'm so content in my file effects, and it is without question the most efficient my system has ever been. It's also the most consistent I've been for a long time. It's the most peaceful I felt for a long time. It's so good, you know? It's absolutely not letting me down on any level. But, like, when you're a planner person or a notebook person, I think the trouble is always going to be that you're going to have some level of FOMO for something if you're consistent. And, like, that sucks. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say about it. It just sucks. Like, you see people using their Hobonichis, and I think it's fine, and I don't miss it that much. But then it's when I look back at my own book that I have the problem. It's not even social media that's eating me up, which I know is the case for a lot of people, is trying to resist the social media FOMO. I feel like I'm pretty good with that these days. But it's looking back at my own books now, because I have so many. <laughs> when I look at my cousin especially, I'm like, this makes me feel FOMO. I miss my Hobonichi from this respect, this angle. Um, and like just sitting and working on these big pages. And like, it's so weird. Um, I, I don't know. I just keep looking at it and I'm like, I should stop looking at it as a really the thing. But I just, I kind of miss it. And that's kind of what I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks. And I'm not interested in replacing my file effects, just to make that clear. Um, I don't want to, especially now that I have so many good memories stored in archive binders and in file effects pages. Like, I am not interested in completely losing my file effects. What I am kind of thinking about is potentially getting... 
what I did, here's what I did, is I sold my black gingham, I sold a, uh, I took it to the post office yesterday, um, I sold my black gingham horn that I was holding on to, um, so I finally rehomed that, I felt brave enough to rehome that, and what I want to do now is maybe get a Hobonichi Cousin Avec, like the middle book, and then I would like to kind of think about using that alongside my Philofax. And I know that sounds bananas because upkeeping a cousin is like a full-time job. <laughs> um, it is a lot of work, like it's it was too much work for me last year. And I'm not going to stop maintaining my Philofax on the side, so it will be a lot of work. But I would kind of maybe like to have it to dip in and out of throughout the year. Because even just having like the six months or the five months that I do in this one, I still think I really valued it. So I had April and then I had like a bit of August, July, no sorry, August, September and October. It's literally like three or four months, if that. But I still think it was really nice and I enjoyed it. And it's like, I think so long as you're using it in some amount, I think maybe it's fine to have both. I know a lot of people have multiple and they maintain multiple and not everything is full and I think maybe that's something that I could also come to terms with if you know what I mean. At least then it would keep the Hobonichi FOMO leveled out, <laughs> like it would help quiet the cravings, especially when September hits and August hits and you get all of the previews. I think all of us notebook people um, or planner journal keepers, I think it can be really hard to resist that time of year. That time of year is such like a like a kryptonite almost for so many of us. <laughs> it doesn't matter how strong or how secure we feel in a system, as soon as they start doing the previews and everyone's buzzing about it, you're like, oh god, I am in danger. Even though you maybe don't necessarily need or want it, it's still like the temptation and then you look at it and everyone's so excited and you just want to be a part of it, I guess. Um, and as I say, I don't think I mind too much, but it's then when I look at my own books, I feel it quite, quite acutely. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about this week, is potentially getting a cousin of Eric. I think then I don't have to worry about how much stuff I stick in. Um, if I want to, I could print my Filofax pages and trim the bit with the holes off. I've seen a lot of you guys doing that, you print them bigger or smaller and then you just stick them on a big page, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, I see people do it with my dividers and it's really smart. So I was thinking I could even have like my commonplace pages, and if I wanted to, I could print articles, I could maybe just resize it slightly to go in this gap, and then I could stick it, and then I could still annotate if I want to, and I would still be able to print it normally for my Filofax anyway, it would just be trimming, <laughs> just be trimming the page. Um, so I guess I'm thinking about maybe trying to maintain both while keeping my Filofax, my main book still, but just being able to dip in and out of a couple of places, maybe that would help me stay even more consistent for longer, I guess, because I know it sounds counterproductive or counterintuitive, but because it, it quiets that Fobonichi homo, that homo, <laughs> FOMO, <laughs> because it helps quiet those cravings and it suppresses the, the FOMO a little bit, the fear of missing out, I think maybe it might help. Um, I don't know, that's kind of my thinking. Um, interested to know what you think. Um, am I in danger properly or do you think I could make it work? Um, I'm just thinking about it. I kind of miss this space. Like maybe it doesn't hurt to have. It's like having multiple sketchbooks to dip in and out of a different size. Sometimes you think differently on different paper. Um, but there we go. That's where I'm at. I don't know. I asked you this recently, or I asked you this maybe at the beginning of the year, I think, but it's always fun to read your comments, especially last week with the book recommendations. Thank you for that. I have so many to look through. Um, this week, I would like to know if you're still in the book you intended to be in this year, or if you've changed again. I know I asked this only a couple of months ago, or a few months ago maybe, but it's always interesting to get the update. Like, where are you guys at <laughs> with your books? Um, I would be really curious to know, and if you're more or less comfortable than you thought you would be, that kind of thing. Like, where have you ended up? What's your process been this year so far? I would really love to know. I find it really interesting, and I think it can be reassuring for a lot of people, myself included, to know that other people are also kind of working things out as they go. Um, especially if you're someone who has a lot of changing needs, it can be really difficult to, to know that one month something will work better and another month something else will work better again, and to know that you kind of have to keep going back and forth a bit, I guess is a hard thing <laughs> to come to terms with, but it's kind of the reality for so many of us, I think. Um, so let me know. If you don't mind sharing, let me know. Um, I'm sure myself and everyone else would love to read about it in the comments. It's just, I find it interesting. Um, I think that's all I really have this week. My nose is starting to run. <laughs> um, I think I am getting a migraine. I feel very 
very out of it and I have a, like a weird feeling in my head and because my nose is running too so my sinuses are getting weird it's normally kind of a sign um I normally piece it together really late but it's kind of clicking for me and I'm like oh <laughs> so I'm in danger in a different way today um I just thought I would come and talk to you about it I think it's interesting oh the last thing I wanted to mention maybe I forgot is that I think I would use the daily pages in the same way that I have done like last year and then my calendar I would use as a calendar and then with the to-do list I think like I was um just realized I forgot to go over that quickly because I've been thinking about it so maybe using the calendar the same way very minimally it wouldn't really affect anything going on in my file effects it would just be the same thing and then I think maybe what I would like to do is use the weekly pages for my sleep stuff um and you might remember that this is something I loosely trialed I think here um, maybe what I would like to do is keep that same information and talk about how my sleep is going and how weird my dreams are, <laughs> um, document my sleep paralysis and stuff, and then maybe also including, like, commonplace thing about sleep and stuff like that, like, maybe having it more of, like, a scrapbooky thing, just to stop me spinning out about it so much. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, this is how the whole thing started, this is how I got here, was that I was thinking about trying to collect sleep data again and then I was thinking that maybe it would be good to have a separate space for that or a more organized space for that and then I made the digital pages and then I realized that I didn't really love typing them up <laughs> it's kind of annoying um but it would be easier for me and my doctor to read so then I don't know but then I thought about having a separate book for sleep stuff that's kind of like like partly data logging and partly commonplacing and stuff about spooky stuff and sleep stuff which is kind of the theming of Everyday Gloom, my zine at the moment, it's sort of like that kind of overlapping. Maybe if I could keep my pages like that, it would be less depressing. <laughs> I would be spinning out about it less and it would be more kind of just getting on with it and engaging with the spookier side of it and not, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a better balance, I guess. Um, so that's kind of my thinking was like, maybe I could do that. I found a pen that works. Um, I'm using the Zebra Sarasa Dry in 0 0.5, which definitely writes more like a 0 0.7. So that's my dupe. You guys have recommended this pen to me so many times and I didn't try it <laughs> because I did not get on with the vintage Sarasa pens. They're so thin, I hate them, <laughs> they're really scratchy. Um, this one is very similar to the Zebra Eras is Zebra, no, Friction Erasable. Um, that's the dupe it's just not erasable but it writes a little bit darker but the the feeling itself like the the feedback you get from the paper with the pens are like the same um so that's my small <laughs> my small update on the pen anyway it works really well on the paper it dries pretty fast um uh, so i think that's what i'll go with if i do um, but that's kind of my thinking is that maybe I can have the big pages when I want them and then I could keep sleep stuff in here and it might be nice. Um, and then, you know, even if I only fill out three months in each half of the Avec book, then I still think it's time or space that I wanted and that I needed. And then everything else can still just go in the file effects like normal, you know, I could have two places, two spaces. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um... Don't worry, love of my life, file effects <laughs> is still going to be here, still going to be around. Still working on the autism inserts behind the scenes. It's slow going because my brain is made of like mashed potatoes, um, but I'm working on it. Okay, that is my small update this week. I just figured I would come and talk to you guys instead of sitting there thinking and spiraling by myself. Um, let me know. As I said, let me know about your books. I would really like to know. Um, and I will see you next week with something less unhinged. <laughs>